Hey everyone, welcome to DevFest 2020 with JDG Doha. My name is Sachin, a Google Developer Expert, and I'm also the head of Google Developer Groups Doha. So for today, join us for an extremely awesome session of how we kind of bring experts from all over the world in a virtual conference or virtual event throughout two days. So brief introduction about myself. My name is Sachin. I'm a Google Developer Expert. I head the Google Developer Groups Doha. I'm also the CTO of a company called Tuplo Life, which is a healthcare company based out of Dallas, Texas. So for today's session, we have around 20 plus speakers joining us from around the world who are Googlers, GDs, and industry experts. And for these two days, we have a packed agenda where we will be covering everything from mobile, web, cloud, AI, machine learning, Google Assistant, and more. We also have a dedicated Women Tech Makers panel discussions as well. So make sure to tune in and join the live streams. With that being said, over the course of the next two days, we have around 20 plus talks workshops, panel discussions. And along with that, I would also like to highlight the agenda. So for day one, we have the opening keynote, which is this. And then after that, we'll have a continuous sessions, back-to-back -back sessions starting from 10 o'clock, Doha time. So we are all super excited to have everyone joining us live. And this is going to be an awesome dev fest. This is one of the biggest virtual event that we have done as part of GDG Doha. So we are all super excited to have you all join us for dev fest. On day two, we also have events starting from 5.30 PM Doha time, extending up to 10 o'clock. So make sure to tune in to both day one and day two. It just doesn't end with just virtual events. We have participation certificates for everyone who joins these sessions. So make sure to join in as many as sessions as possible where we give away participation certificates and there's more. You also get a chance to win a Google Home Mini, one of the three Google Home Minis that we are giving away. Uh, so to be part of this, you need to be a resident of Qatar and how you can actually win this is the rules are pretty simple. You attend the session, answer the questions and the feedback form that's part of each session. And the more correct answers that you have, and the sooner that you answer it, you have a chance to win one of the three Google Home Minis. And here's actually a special video from Google developers. So before we actually start the next session, I would like to invite everyone to join in on our uh, social media channels, as well as make sure that you have already registered for GDG uh, Doha Dev Fest. So all the links and uh, all the links will be actually shared in the uh, comment section. So make sure that you actually go ahead and check, the, check out the links and make sure you register yourself and join the GDG Doha chapter. Hello and welcome to DevFest 2020. I'm Jason Titus, VP of Engineering at Google, joining you from my home in California. 
Each year, we at Google truly feel the anticipation for DevFest. It's a one-of-a-kind series of developer conferences, and we're glad you can join us and the local developers within your community. Your local DevFest event this weekend is one of hundreds taking place all around the world right at this moment. And what makes DevFest truly unique is that it's run by volunteer community organizers on a mission to help other local developers grow and share a passion for Google technologies. Now, 2020 has been a year of radical change for people across the globe. But when difficult times came about, developers within this community came together online to plan a virtual DevFest where each local chapter could participate, helping each other teach and learn when we need to connect the most. And these connections can be so important. I can remember the first developer conferences I went to, where I met people who were already doing the kinds of things I dreamed of doing. They had started companies, built products, and I got to hear the stories of what had worked and what had gone wrong. And we hope that all of you will get to have similar experiences at DevFest this year. At Google, we've always believed that we are only successful when all of our users are successful. While Google and its products may plant a seed, it's developers like yourself who make the seeds grow and thrive. This community of developers has shown us firsthand how you're using technology to help each other during times of need. Let me introduce you to my teammate, David, to share with you some great examples. Welcome, David. Hi, Jason. Thank you. And welcome, everybody, to this year's DevFest season. I'm David McLaughlin, Director of Developer Ecosystems at Google. So I've been with DevFest since the very first year in 2010, when I was able to join a, a large percentage of them. Back then, they were a series of targeted events in just a handful of countries. In the years since then, we've had massive growth to countries all over the world. While I really do miss being able to join many of you in person this year, I'm happy to be able to continue the celebration of developers and tech in a new virtual format and bring people together to learn and to share what we're all building. Over the years, it's been great to see the apps and the solutions the broader community has built with the support of their local GDG chapters. We now have thousands and thousands of developers who are working to address real world problems in their local communities. Particularly during the challenging times of COVID, I'm impressed by how much your work has made people's lives better. There's a few recent examples that truly stand out to me. Community developers from GDG West Sweden recently worked with the Swedish government to create Hack the Crisis, an event focused on designing, testing, and executing ideas in response to recent challenges. One of the finalists, named Remote and Gigs, helped modernize the Swedish government's employment website to match job seekers with remote work. Nearby in Romania, GDG groups organized a hackathon gathering 270 different mentors and students from across eight different countries. The hackathon brought together developers to save lives, to save communities, and to save businesses. Some of the winners included an online platform that connected volunteers with nonprofits across the region, a system to help doctors work with each other and to ease online consultations, and a personal assistant for health and nutrition tracking. Another cool app that they developed was Risk Alert, an app that alerts emergency rooms that a patient with a very rare disease is about to arrive so that the hospital can prepare for any special needs. In Asia, GDG Tainan initiated the mask inventory map at the start of COVID-19, which crowdsources mask inventory from local store data, combining it with the Google Maps API. The project was so popular that it caught the attention of Taiwan's government inspiring them to publish public data APIs on mask inventory managed by the government. Taiwan's digital minister has since encouraged the GDG Tainan chapter to create more than 100 different apps to help the local community. In India, GDG Cloud Pune used machine learning with TensorFlow and GCP to help their community with an app that remotely analyzes dental health and helps patients book at-home dental services. They've had over 300 trained images so far, and the developer community is working with local universities to gather more than 50,000 dental images to improve the application. In the Middle East, the region's largest international Women's Day event was held in April in Turkey by multiple GDG groups working together. 
they had over 2,500 attendees to the event, which included a raffle for online courses and talks in artificial intelligence and data mining. The event helped women across the community and across the region learn and apply their skills. And of course, here in the United States, the GDG Memphis chapter has joined GiveCamp, where software developers in the area donate their skills for nonprofits, as well as helping kids learn to code on the weekends. These are just a small sample of the ways that Google Developer Group chapters and communities like yours all over the world are learning together and giving back what they've learned to really help people's lives everywhere be better. I encourage all of you to continue be in community with your fellow developers. Think about how can you use the skills and the tech that you're learning this weekend at DevFests, as well as the networks and the communities that you form, the new friends that you make. How do you combine all of these to make a difference in your own area? Now let's take a look at a really inspiring story from Uganda. It shows how a community member started learning about machine learning and ended up building a really nifty app using TensorFlow that detects diseases in plants and helps farmers reduce crop devastation. Take a look. Growing up in the city, I never expected to work in agriculture. But when fall armyworm attacked, it affected us all. Since its arrival in 2016, this crop pest has caused massive devastation. I've met farmers who have lost everything. So I wanted to use my skills as a software developer to help. At a Google Study Jam, we taught ourselves TensorFlow. We started by building an Android app on top of an open source API. The app allows farmers to spot infestations early, far beyond the capability of human eyes, and suggest an effective treatment. When I was younger, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but then I discovered app development, and I was excited to show people something they never thought possible. Machine learning gives us the advantage against fall armyworm ultimately saving harvests and reducing pesticides. We are just getting started and there are so many other sectors like health and education that machine learning could really improve. Farming is a crucial aspect of life in Uganda, and I feel proud. I'm part of a team driving to ensure our culture can continue. Earlier, you saw a beautiful inspirational video about how machine learning and Android were used to create an app to detect crop diseases. So for DevFest, I wanted to get together a few of my friends from Google and beyond to show you how you could get started in building something just like that from scratch in a few minutes. We'll build an Android app and a web app. So to get started with Android, let's see what chat can teach us. I wanna create an app that's able to recognize information about plants. It's going to need camera functionality as well as machine learning inference. Let's see what that looks like in code. The app is written in Kotlin and uses Camera X to take the pictures and ML kit for on-device machine learning analysis. The core functionality is in Take Photo, where we take a picture, analyze it, and display the results. First, we call Take Picture on a Camera X image capture object that was created earlier. One of the parameters is a callback object, which has this on capture success function. We get the received image into the format we need for MLKit, then we create an image labeler object and process the image. When this succeeds, we receive a collection of image labels, which we turn into text strings and display a toast with the results. Let's see what the demo looks like. So we'll take a picture and it says, I see an insect and a plant. So that was pretty easy, rigging up Camera X and ML Kit to detect arbitrary objects in the camera view. But the results were pretty generic because the data set didn't have enough information about our domain. So let's dig a little deeper. 
Okay, let's go deeper. Now we need a model for something very specific, detecting diseases in bean plants instead of cassava. Let's explore how to build it. On this guide, we'll use some of the great TensorFlow tooling available. Let's start with Colab. You can understand Colab as a cloud-hosted development tool. We will do all our coding on it, and you will not need to install anything on your machine. Let's start with a new notebook. Let's just turn the Python to beans. We will need to install some packages that we are going to use later. These packages are not installed on your machine. They are on a cloud machine that was created for your collab. Nice, it finished installed the packages. Let's download the data and do some visualization to understand how our data is separated. Perfect. We download the data. Let's take a look on some of the images so we can have a better understanding of what we are doing here. Here they are. These are some of the images that will be used for training our model later. Now we have the data. We need to create a model. We are not going to create one from scratch. We are going to use a technique called transfer learning. TensorFlow Hub is a repository for TensorFlow models. You can find all kinds of models here. Let's start with this one. Let's go back to our collab. Let's define a model handle. Nice. Now we have the data and the base model. How can we do transfer learning? To do that, we are going to use one of the tooling that I mentioned before called Model Maker. Model Maker make your life way easier when you need to do transfer learning. Let's create the spec for our base model. Let's create our train variables here using the data set beans that we've just seen. And now we are going to put everything together with Model Maker by defining a model with the training data and the spec that we got from TensorFlow Hub. This will take a couple of minutes. It finished training. And as you can see here, our accuracy is at 87%. Of course, let's evaluate the model with some data it didn't see yet and see how good it is. Nice, 95%. The TensorFlow Lite model Gus just created contains all the metadata Android Studio needs to recognize it and automatically build classes for it. To get started, you can update your build.gradle file to include the following TensorFlow Lite dependencies. Then, you'll want to import your generated TF Lite file into the ML folder of your project. Let's check out the details of our imported model. From here, we can see an example of how to use the model in our app. Let's move over to the main activity class to take advantage of it. Inside of our image capture callback here on line number 78, we create an instance of our model. Next, we use it to process the captured image here on line number 84. And finally, here on lines 92 through 98, we display the results of consuming the output inside of a toast message. Let's run our app. Now, instead of telling us it's looking at a leaf or a plant, it can actually tell us if it's looking at a bean leaf and give a diagnosis. Sweet. So this concept works, but it's very much a raw demo. What if we want to make this a more successful app? Well, we'd probably need to add services like authentication so our users can sign in analytics and A-B testing so we can find out how our users are really interacting with our app, some crash reporting or performance monitoring, and an easy way to save our users' data to the cloud. Luckily, that's where Firebase comes in. Now, the new and improved Firebase plugin in Android Studio makes this simple. I'll start by adding some analytics so I can find out exactly how our users are interacting with our app. And the plugin does most of the work to get the library integrated into my project. Now that I've done that, well, we can uh, get an instance of the library up here, and then we can log what kind of results we're getting from MLKit. And then once we've done that, there's a lot of ways to get at this data. It'll start showing up here in the Firebase dashboard, but I find one really fun way of viewing this data is to use stream view, which kind of gives you a real tiny sample of what kinds of analytics results we're seeing. Looks like I've already recorded several of these select content events, and I can dig into these event properties and see what kinds of results our users are getting. And I could start using that information to maybe refine my MLKit model or A-B test different alternatives. Firebase helps you build better apps, and analytics is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. 
Maybe we could let our users upload their own pictures and store them in the cloud using cloud storage for Firebase. There's so many possibilities. This is a sample app, but if we were to productize this, it's important to keep in mind how our AI design decisions impact our users. For instance, we need to consider if and or how it makes sense to display confidence intervals to help your users interpret the ML model output. Or say, how you design the onboarding experience sets user expectations for the capabilities and limitations of your ML-based app, which is vital to app adoption and engagement. For more guidance on AI design decisions, check out the People Plus AI Guidebook at pair.withgoogle.com slash guidebook. This use case focuses on plant diseases, but for other use cases where our ML-based predictions intersect with people or communities, we absolutely need to think about responsible AI themes like privacy and fairness, which you can learn more about at tensorflow.org slash resources slash responsible dash AI. And don't forget about the web. I built a PWA that can be installed across all your users' platforms. It combines the web camera with TensorFlow.js, and by integrating machine learning, we can make an amazing experience that runs across all browsers. Now let's take a look. We have our standard project layout with a HTML file, a manifest, and a service worker to make it a PWA. We have some styles to make it look good, and our data folder that contains our TensorFlow configuration and trained model that we're going to use in the app. Now to the heart of the project. Let's go back to the HTML file and see what's happening. We're also loading a webcam object. This is just a class that wraps some boilerplate logic to make it easier to pass camera data from Get User Media to TensorFlow. And now let's dive into our app logic in index.js. So I'm just going to use Chrome and the debugger here. And this is only so you can kind of see how easy it is to integrate machine learning into your application. So let's get started by clicking the classify button, get the machine learning gears into action. And immediately, we break into the TensorFlow tidy function. This is just there to help you kind of clean up any of the memory that TensorFlow uses whilst it makes its prediction. We get our image from the web camera, and then we pass our image back into the, uh, into the machine learning algorithm to make it a prediction. And once we've got a prediction, we access the data, and then we can use that data to update the user interface kind of based on any application logic that we want. And that's pretty much it. Great. So now you have the platform for building a real app with the tooling from Android Studio, the APIs from CameraX, Jetpack, MLKit, Colab, TensorFlow, Firebase, Chrome, and Google Cloud. You have a lot of things that just work better together. This isn't a finished project by any means, just a proof of concept for how a minimum viable product with a roadmap to completion can be put together using Google's developer tools and APIs. You might also want to open source this project too. So developers can suggest improvements, optimizations, or, and even additional features by filing an issue or sending a pull request. It's a great way to get your hard work in front of even more people. We'd love to help you with this, and you can learn more about the process at opensource.guide slash starting a project. Indeed, we've already open sourced the bean disease sample we discussed in this video, so you can have a great place to start. Thanks, Pooja. And as you mentioned, open sourcing a project is a great way to make it grow and inspire people to adopt and extend it. If you want to learn more about what you've seen in this video, please visit us at developers.google.com. Hi, developers. My name is Annie Jean-Baptiste, and I'm the head of product inclusion at Google. The demo you just saw shows how Google's products can come together to create an amazing app. But what about product inclusion? You may be wondering, well, what is product inclusion and why is it important? At Google, we believe that giving power to new voices is the core of innovation. When we bring an inclusive lens to the product design process, we amplify underrepresented voices and allow all users to feel seen and validated in the moments that matter for them. We look beyond ourselves and seek out diverse voices to shape the products that we build. We also believe that we have a responsibility not to disappoint our users, no matter who they are, what they look like, how much money they make, who they love, how old they are, or anything that makes them them. And when we make difference the new normal, we will usher in new opportunities to grow our business by earning the love of all of our users. So whether you're one or 105 years old, live in a city or a remote village, on Wi-Fi or cellular service, Google is there for you to make sure you have the answers you need when you need them. Product inclusion is exactly what it sounds like, bringing an inclusive lens throughout the entire product design process to create more inclusive products for our users. 
And so when you're developing your own apps, I challenge you to incorporate the principles of product inclusion into the design process. Because we believe that you can do well and do good by being intentional about including underrepresented voices at key points in the product design process. Remember, those closest to the problem are also closest to the solution. You can learn more about product inclusion at Google by visiting accelerate.withgoogle.com. Thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Cole, and I'm the Global Developer Communities Program Manager at Google. Now it's time to meet and hear from your local developers. So what can you expect next from your local DevFest? We'll have technical talks, breakout sessions, networking opportunities, and more. These sessions will cover a variety of technologies, such as Android, Google Cloud Platform, machine learning with TensorFlow, Web, Firebase, Google Assistant, and Flutter, with speakers from Google, women tech makers, Google developer experts, and your local community. Be sure to claim your badge for participating in DevFest 2020 by going to google.dev slash DevFest 2020. You can earn even more badges by mastering different Google technologies available on developers.google.com slash learn. As a reminder, one of the most important parts of DevFest is providing an inclusive and harassment-free experience for everyone. As an active participant of DevFest today, we can all agree to treat everyone with respect and to speak up if we see or experience harassment of any kind. Together, we can create an environment that is welcoming and inclusive to everyone with us here today. Follow at GBG on Twitter for highlights from DevFest around the world and try out the DevFest AR filter and avatar. Share what you're learning or your favorite part about the event on social media with hashtag DevFest. And lastly, don't forget community is all about getting to know one another. Use the virtual breakout rooms and chat feature to connect with other developers near you with shared interests. We hope you enjoy DevFest 2020. So we hope that you enjoyed this as much as we did. Uh, this was just a glimpse of what DevFest could be. So it's a developer festival where we have developers and speakers and experts joining us from all over the world to come together and build amazing projects, talks, and sessions and workshops. So with that being said, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel because all the sessions will be streamed live on YouTube as well as our Facebook page. If you haven't done this yet, make sure to join the GDG Doha community. So you can actually go to gdgdoha.com, which actually takes you to the community web page. Make sure that you join the channel, uh, join the community page so that you can be updated for future events. Now, we don't want to basically end with this. We have upcoming events as well, where we are partnering with Orido, which is gonna be the biggest hackathon in Qatar. So if for people who are joining us live from uh, Doha and Qatar, this is an opportunity for you. So make sure that you attend all the sessions in DevFest to grasp as much knowledge as possible, which will actually help you do the 5G virtual hackathon. With that being said, we have come to the end of the keynote. Uh, join the next session, which is actually starting right now. So make sure that you go to the YouTube channel and check out all the live streams for the entire day. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining DevFest 2020 with GDG Doha. My name is Sachin, and see you all in the next one.